Amen. Well, she have it up on the screen there for us. Amen. And, and so we mentioned before, we hope that uh, it was part of our breakthrough as well, getting this uh, screen up here. And we're thankful for that. And uh, another one is cameras on the way. We was able to have uh, raise some funds for the cameras. Amen. We had a brunch this year as well. It's been an awesome year. Again, we had brunch. We had an awesome just events throughout the year, a limited amount of events, but each one turned out to be well. Amen. They were well, and one of them was the, the church brunch, and we say thank you for your giving in that because it raised a nice amount of funds for that. And I, I, I saw our cameras and various things will be uh, installed here in the next week or two, so we're looking forward to that as well. Amen. And truly, uh, again, just all the many blessings in which God has done, and uh, so we say thank you for that. And your support through the year. Your support through the year. You're giving, amen, and, and you're giving and you're tithing offering. Again, you say, preacher, I don't tithe, but start tithing. Start tithing. I'm telling you, it will bless your soul. It will bless your finances abundantly. Write it down, amen. It's already written in the word of God. And so let's step out on faith and give even more this year as unto the Lord. And watch God bless you in a mighty way. So Isaiah 61, we'll read. The Bible says, the spirit of the Lord was upon me because he hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and open the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort them, them that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. He says to give unto the, them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they, may, uh, they might be called trees of righteousness. That they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting uh, of the Lord. He says that he might be glorified. And the Bible says in verse 4, and, and they shall build up old waste cities, and they sh uh, shall raise up the former desolations. And they shall repair the waste cities, the desolation of many generations. And so I want to reread re -read verses um, number two again, number two, Isaiah 61, two. The Bible says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. I want to bring that part about the acceptable year, the acceptable year. And, and for the sake of it, let's go to Ephesians 3.20 as well. Ephesians 3.20 is our second text we'll, we'll use this morning. The Bible says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding, and abundant above all that we ask or think. So he says he can do exceeding above all that we can even ask or think. So we talked about those goals earlier about how you make goals for this year. God can even exceed our goals. Amen. And the Bible says, according to the power, this is the key to the verse, according to the power that worketh in us. Let me know that. According to the power God's going to do his part. Amen. I mean, know that. God's going to do his part. But he says, according to the power that worketh in us, me, you, each of us today. How many going to have faith this morning? Amen. Amen. And we're going to give it a title this, this, this morning about an extraordinary year. An extraordinary year. How many going to believe God for that? Amen. An extraordinary year. Again, we say Happy New Year to each one of you. On this Lord's Day, amen, and truly it's a blessing to get our year started off right in this. And this scripture here was, was a, 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 a testimony or a prophecy, I should say, concerning the Lord's coming. Concerning the Lord coming to the earth as we just celebrated Christmas this past week. And he was, we were celebrating and it was good news that, that Jesus was coming and it will be a great year when he did come. A great year, and really for the years beyond that as well, there will be great uh, days ahead for those that will believe. Uh, uh, years, you think about years in itself, uh, 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 it's, it's a mark in time. It's a way in which we uh, mark time, a way in which we associate, and oftentimes refer back to uh, what happened in the year. Perhaps you have some markers in your mind about 2022, and all of us have markers in our mind about uh, other years, perhaps your year of your birth or the year in which uh, something uh, happened, uh, 1776 or whatever year the country may be, maybe from the independence of your country, whatever it may be. Uh, again, you think about significant times and years in which uh, things transpire. And, and as we look at this, uh, how that 
Again, uh, we share with you in 2022, we believe in God for what? Breakthrough in 2022. Complete victory. Did a whole series, 17 part series about complete victory in our lives, in all aspects of our lives. And amen, and for us to win and, and going into this new year, we can go in and believe God for great and extraordinary things to happen because God has given us victory in our lives. And so as we look at this about, uh, again, we, some, uh, again, some had breakdowns, but some had breakthroughs as well. Uh, when we look at break, we were sharing about breakdowns or uh, breakthroughs uh, this past year, about how, uh, again, how the walls were going to come down. The walls will come down, and, and we encourage you today that those walls don't go back up. Let me say that this morning. Those walls don't go back up again, and where uh, the things in which God has uh, released and God has, uh, has brought us through, and the things in which God has accomplished in our lives, don't let that go by. And so we look at this uh, breakdowns again. Can also we think about breaking down walls, or when things break down in our lives, or we talk about how the uh, and some may have had breakdowns and things did not go the way in which we intended for it to go. But breakdowns can be a blessing as well. Let me say that. Breakdowns can be a blessing. Amen. And we got to look at it that way anyway. Your car breaks down on the side of the road. Say, you know what? Well, God is trying to keep me. Uh, something. This is happening for a reason. You always got to put a positive spin in that thing. How many know what I'm talking about? And the other day, uh, uh, my uh, uh, breakdowns can be a blessing and again in it. Why? Because it calls us to get it fixed as well. When something breaks down, it could be a blessing because, again, we are able to take some time out to get it fixed. Uh, just yesterday, we went down to Pet Boys with my daughter, and uh, she said, Daddy, the brake lights is on, these lights is on, this is that, no, all these different things. I said, well, let's take it down. We said, we took it down to the man, and uh, uh, we went in there, and he hit up the hood and said, you know what? We've come to realization the fluids were low. When you think something breaks down, it's not really broken, but it was messed up, and so, so it's just maintenance. There you go. And so as we look at this, and how the, it just needs some extra fluids. It wasn't broken. It just needed fluids. Amen? Some extra fluids. And the reason I bring it up is because, again, uh, uh, we, we see that uh, through the, the, the oil, of, uh, it was lacking oil or it was lacking some type of thing that it needs. And in our lives, sometimes breakdowns uh, happen because there's something lacking Something lacking. In church today, as we move on, and so those breakdowns, again, could have been a blessing to where we can get it fixed as well. I want you to know this morning, God can fix some things. Amen. Amen. God can fix some things. Again, as we look back over this year and the things going forward, uh, again, uh, the reason why things break down is perhaps even corrupted or malfunctioning parts. I uh, guess we said, but we, uh, this fluid that we want to speak about in a minute is about the Holy Spirit as well. The anointing of God is what the writer talked about here. Again, the anointing of God and the moving of God. And it keeps things going. It keeps things working. And, we, and God will work through his anointing and his power this morning. And so God, we see through the breakdowns, even if he had breakdowns, God can fix it. How I many say that? God can fix it this morning. God can fix everything that we have lead up. And so let's look at some more of this. When the walls do come down. Amen. And for some, it did not come down. And really because, again, and it's the person's own choice. It's the person's choice if your walls don't fall down. Back to what we're talking about, according to our faith. Be it unto you. So according to how extraordinary will this year be? How extraordinary will this year be? It depends on us. It a lot of it depends on us. Again, we are the sum total of our decisions. The choice that we make, we choose whether to follow God or we believe God and we be led and let God lead us and direct us in our lives. When we let God move in a mighty way, let God operate. Amen. We have to play our part as well. Let me say that. We have to play our part. This year will be extraordinary. Again, it can go many ways. You think about it. It can go many ways. An extraordinary year. Again, we think about the positive sometimes, but again, there's other times, and uh, again, there could be uh, on the other end as well. We'll get into that in a minute. But this year can be a blessed year, and for some, it can be an extraordinary on the other way. This prophecy about Jesus coming again nearly 2,000 years ago, and it made it open up a door for, for, for uh, this prop when it for, was fulfilled, I should say, when the prophecy was fulfilled, it, it was made a way for where every year going forward to the believer, it could be an extraordinary year. 
It can be an extraordinary year, brothers and sisters, today. And so those that are in Christ, let's get down to the breakdown of this text. And so extraordinary, extraordinary, not just the same old, same old. How am I going to say that? Say, preacher, I'm tired of the same old, same old. I'm looking for something extraordinary to happen. Extraordinary, outside of my norm, outside of the same old, same old, and so beyond the norm, beyond what we expected, God is able to do this. We come back to the scripture in a minute, but he's able to do exceeding abundant above all that we can even ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Exceeding abundant above all these things in which we can even imagine what God has in store for mankind. There's some extraordinary things that's going to take place, brothers and sisters. And God, uh, again, has always, always been able to do and exceed these things. Again, God, I believe this, this year, God is going to be able to blow our minds away. Amen. How many going to have faith like that? Amen. God can do some mind-blowing things. Some mind-blowing things. I, I want to go back to this word extraordinary real quick because the, the God, God is an extraordinary God and exceeding and extraordinary is something, again, uh, kind of tie, go hand in hand. Uh, and and we, uh, before we go into all the good about extraordinary, let's look at some ugly real quick. The good, the bad, and the ugly about the extraordinary. Can we do that real quick? <laughs> the good, the bad, and the ugly. Preach, I knew it was coming, preaching. <laughs> the good, the bad, and the ugly. It was not time to say, you want the good? Give us the good first. No, I'm going to give you the ugly, the bad, and the ugly first. I'll give you two places. We're in a time of, 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 of grace right now, brothers and sisters. It's the time of grace. And when this prophecy was fulfilled, Jesus Christ, when he came into the earth, it opened up a time of grace. But prior to this, as we go to Genesis, uh, uh, or even Psalm 7, 11, real quickly, Psalm 7, 11, uh, the Bible talked about how God is angry with the wicked every day. And God is angry with the wicked every day and how, the, again, there's some things in which extraordinarily happen through the history of time. We think about a God of love. We think about a God that, that, that does great things, and naturally he is that. He is that thing, but we have to also look at the other side of this as well. The Bible says God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. We sad to say to how the men and women throughout the years and year after year, 365 days a year, people say no to God. People say no to God. And God is, we shared this other day about God's grace and his mercy has really, really held back the judgment that will come one day. He's held back what, what, what are some extraordinary things that we read about in Revelation, some extraordinary things that perhaps we'll see in 2023. There's some ugly things that could perhaps take place. And it's, it's important for us to get to God. I'll, I'll give you a few here. God is, uh, again, in Genesis 6, 3, 6, 3 through 5. It's a story, as many of you are familiar with, again, about the, uh, the ugly. I'm going to give you an ugly story here. But in it all, but God, even in this, was going to be able to bless. The Bible says, the, my, my spirit will not always strive with man. My spirit will not always strive with man is what God has said. He says, and how them, uh, he says, for he also is flesh, and his days shall be 120 years. In the book of Genesis, many, many times prior to these verses, we read how that people live for hundreds of years, 900, 600, 700, 900 years. I remember that. But because of man's wickedness, here in this verse here, God says, you know, I'm going to cut it off at 120. <laughs> you ever see that? God, you know, one of people don't live 900 years and 700 years no more. He said, because man was doing all minds of things. He said, I'm going to cut it off at 120. Because the longer man was out here, he did, the more dirt he did. The more things in which, this thing keeps collapsing. Turn it back on for me. Turn it off, turn it back on for me. Again, the more things in which were done, the more... In which uh, God was angry. And so we would not always strive with man. Because of this, uh, uh, he determined in 120 years. The Bible says in verse 4, he said, There were giants in the land. He said, And in those days, after when uh, uh, the sons of God came into the daughters of men, he says, and bear children unto them. The same mighty men were old of old. He says, men of renown. This is a story about how the giants were created. Like, the giants were created. Again, why? Because, again, of man mixing with angel. And God got angry with this. The Bible says they, they begin to mix, and giants were in the creation of giants. 
The Bible says God saw that the wickedness in verse 5 of men and, and it was great on the earth. It was great. As mankind began to conjure up, if it felt good, he did it. Y'all see that? It sounds like 2020 is getting back to that in 2020. And whatever goes, sometimes it goes. We pray for our country, amen? amen. Pray for our land, brothers and sisters today. And the Bible says that, he says, in every imagination of faults of his heart, was only evil continually. This was a condition in mankind. And the Bible says in Genesis 7, 18, the Bible says it rained like never before. Y'all know the story. The Bible says in the when it rained for 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible says in verse 18, the, the waters prevailed and increased great upon the earth. The ark went upon the face of the earth, uh, the earth, the water, excuse me, and the Bible says in 19, the waters prevailed exceedingly. And then it went on to say it's upon the earth and the high hills and under the heaven, the whole heavens was covered with water. This was an ugly scene. An ugly scene because why it goes back to man being extraordinarily wicked. Extraordinarily wicked, he says, beyond what we can even imagine. And the things going on in our land today, brothers and sisters, today. I'm dealing with the ugly first before we get to the good. There's some things in our nation, in our globe, that we don't even know and see. Some of y'all know and see. There's some things that's happening in our world. And God is upset. Extraordinary things, extraordinary events. And so as we see it rain, it rain, it rain. And the rain kept falling. And, and the rain will continue to fall even in 2023. Not so much of physical rain, stay with me. But there was some rain of extraordinary things to get man's attention. I believe that in 2023, if man does not repent and turn to God, I'm telling you today as a warning to whoever may be watching this video, whoever in this service, we got to get to God, brothers and sisters today. Yeah. I'm telling you today because some extraordinary events will take place. As we get closer to the end time, brothers and sisters, I'm telling you in the last days that we're in, we will see some extraordinary events that will blow men and women's minds away. Disasters and things in which we scratch our head and say, my God, have mercy on the people, have mercy in our land. But you know what? It's time for man to repent. This is an acceptable year of the Lord we're talking about. This can be an acceptable extraordinary year. It can be a year we have the choice. Can it be ugly or will it be good? It's up to us. Amen. Will it be a year of blessing? Will it be a year of curse? It's up to the receiver. Amen. The church of the day, the ugly, and we have to begin to realize that God is angry with the wicked every day. The Bible says, and so we encourage you today, God is wrapping things up in the time of grace as we share with you. The past 2,000 years is what we call the time of grace. God said he wouldn't do it anymore. God said he wouldn't flood the earth like this before. He said the next time it will be fire. Go back and read the book of Peter in various places. The Bible says extraordinary events will take place. And so we encourage you this morning to get in the ark of God. Get in God, church this day. Get as close to God as possible. How many going to do that with us? Get in close to God. Say, let my, let my relationship become extraordinary. I don't want to just go through the motions this morning. I don't want to just go through the ups and downs. Uh, again, the, the, the service here and the service there. But let me begin to get fully dedicate my life to God. Amen. Amen. An extraordinary move. Get in the ark. Get saved. Be born again. Become a part of the church. The only place of safety. The only place of safety. Not talking about this physical building either. Amen. Back to what we said before. You are the body of Christ. Amen. And everywhere you go, the gates of hell shall not prevail. And when you're in Christ, the floodgates will not prevail. That when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard, brothers and sisters, today. The Lord will protect his people. The Lord will keep us along the way in this extraordinary events that will take place. That will come. God, by his grace, will keep us every day. But the Bible even says it rains on everybody. How <laughs> I many read it verse before? The Bible says it rains on the good and the evil. So some of us may even get our own raindrops on us. But you know what? If something does happen, keep your faith in Christ. Amen. Amen. Keep your faith in God. The doctor may say this. Sister, keep your faith in God. Amen. Again, well, the calamity may happen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. I'm on my way to heaven. Amen. Amen. Whatever the case may be, let your faith exceed what goes out, comes our way. 
Extraordinary faith, extraordinary ties and bonds to God to say nothing will be able to shake us. How many going to say that with us this morning? We're talking about an extraordinary year. And where the devil was saying, man, I thought I got those folks. I thought I had them bound. I thought I had them broken. I thought I had him wounded. I thought I had this one destroyed and extraordinary. By the, he'll be amazed. The enemy will be amazed and say, how are they still standing? I'm going to say that with us. How are they still going on? How are they still able to withstand the blows, no doubt, of the enemy? Because our God was able to keep us through it all. God has an ark of place of safety in his church, in his body. No doubt we are safe in him. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. And they are saying, let's move on a little bit further. Uh, again, it's so men. Men counted as nothing. All right, nothing will happen preaching to me. Again, extraordinary amount of people. Also, again, I, I hate to say it, perhaps we'll lose their lives. We've seen it over and over again. We've seen it over and over again. Say, wow, friends and loved ones leaving this earth. My brother-in-law this past year passed away. I totally wasn't expecting it. Perhaps you've had loved ones. I pray for the Jones family here. Way better, Charlene. Our prayers are with her. Her father passed away a few days ago. Funeral services, again, not been arranged yet, I guess. I'm still working on it. It's funeral service will be here. Show your support with the family there. But various ones, again, through death, God is able to keep us. Amen. God is able to keep us. Listen to what it says, the bad. I'm going to give you the bad. We're going to get to the good in a minute. Give me a few more minutes. The bad, and also in Genesis. The Bible says there was another place, again, in the beginning. All this happened in the book of Genesis. A lot of it did. The, 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 how a mankind got off to a bad start. The Bible says Abraham dwelled in the land of Canaan and Lot dwelled in the city in the plain and pitched his tent towards Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked sinners before the Lord exceedingly. There are words again. I'm talking about, again, extraordinary. Exceeding wickedness that went on in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. God sent warning to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. He sent one a warning for what they've done and what the evil they had done. Thank God for God letting us know. Hey Amen. I'd be your worst enemy if I didn't talk about it. I mean, how many say that? I'd be your worst enemy if I didn't warn. And so naturally they had dug themselves into a place of evil. And the Bible says, again, they said we will not change. God, they, re they refuse to repent from the warnings of God. They refused to repent and they said, no, we're going to continue in our sin. I pray to God this will be a year where many women say, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop and I'm going to turn my life to God. I'm gonna, how many going to pray that prayer with us? Perhaps you have friends and loved ones who are, I say, I refuse to believe God. I believe this can be an extraordinary year Amen. to where our children and our youth and our friends and loved ones who have rejected God all these years can come to Christ. How many believe that with us? I believe that uh, it can take place. These people said, no, we don't want God. No, we don't want him. Uh, and they rejected him. And as a result, we see great calamity had taken place. God rained down fire and judgment upon that place. Again, again and so for years going forward, it was an extraordinary time. Uh, marked down in the history of time. Uh, Jesus even told us, he says, remember Lot's wife. Because why? She turned back to look uh, at the things of the world. Uh, church of the day, she was turned into a pillar of salt because God had told them to leave. Uh, God had told them to escape. Uh, God had told them to let go of sin, let go of the things in which what God was angry with. Uh, and the Bible says they re not many refused and they died in that city. But thank God, God always had a way of escape. So Lot and, his, and, and, and Abram and the rest of them were able to escape. They were able to, he was able to flee to go with his uncle. And so let me get to the good here. I brought all that to whack because it can be exceedingly or extraordinary rough year for the non-believer. It can be an extraordinary year for the non-believer. Brothers and sisters today, Serve God, live for God, get in Christ, get as close to God as we can. Because I don't know what all is going to take place, but some extraordinary things can happen. The good and the bad and the ugly. The good is this, the good is this. Let's get to it. The Bible says in Genesis as well, in spite of all that was going on, in spite of all that's going on in our world today, the Bible says the Lord spake unto Abram. After this, he says, Lot separated him. 
He said, lift up thou thine eyes and look into the, from the place that thou art northward and southward, eastward and westward. So Abram said, he told Abram, he says, hey, you know what? All this is going on, but he says, look, and amen, and I better have something better. He says, for the land which thou seest, he says, I will give it to thee, thy seed forever. God was giving Abram a promise in the midst of all of this wickedness. God said, I'm going to bless you in the midst of it all. In the midst of it all, I'm telling you, God has extraordinary promises uh, for the believer. How I many believe that? He says the north, the south, the east, and the west. He said, I'm going to bless you with a seed. I'm going to bless you with the children and raise up a nation through you. How can this happen? I cannot have, my wife can't have children, he said. How can this be? He says, he will be able to do it. There's nothing too hard for our God. Amen. How I many believe that today? And so, with that being said, you believe in your heart and your soul in 2023 and beyond. There is nothing too hard. I don't care how exceeding it may be. I don't care how extraordinary the circumstance may be. There is nothing. I'm going to say that. There is nothing too hard for our God. <clears throat> he told Abraham, he says, hey, believe the promises that I'm telling you. He says, I will bless you exceeding in an extraordinary way. In an extraordinary way, he was able to take his wife and no doubt she had a son uh, I, named Isaac and naturally through his lineage uh, and eventually through Jacob uh, they would raise up a mighty nation of people uh, to where they were blessed uh, and they were heads and not the tail uh, they would lend and not borrow brothers and sisters they, amen they were blessed beyond measure and that same blessing that same promises to the believer today church it can be an extraordinary year for each of us as we believe I believe that today and so back to our text in Isaiah. I'm going to wrap this up. The Bible says in Isaiah 61, he said the spirit of the Lord was upon him. He said because he had anointed me to preach good tidings. And so in this year of 2023, 20, good tidings. Good tidings. That's why I got the good, bad, and the ugly out the way. The bad and the ugly out the way. Because there's some good in this year. Extraordinary good. Again, as we see, as we believe God, trust God, and all that was going on in the Old Testament, this prophecy was tucked right in the middle of it. That something exceedingly uh, extraordinary would take place. Extraordinary. The Bible says to preach the word of God. Good news was going to come. Good news was coming through the preaching of God's word. Good tidings to the meek. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord will be upon him. And amen, for it to be an extraordinary year, we have to go in the Holy Spirit. You have to live in the Holy Spirit. You have to dwell in the Holy Ghost. How many say that with us? The spirit was upon him and it will be upon you. Let it be upon you to live and to dwell in and let the spirit of God guide you. The Holy Ghost is power, church, this morning. The Holy Ghost is power is what we need today. The Holy Ghost will strengthen you to go on and overcome. The Holy Ghost is there, the anointing of God. Again, that anointing he was referring to was the spirit to give you strength, no doubt, in the weak times, to give you the, the, the ability to overcome. That's what the Holy Ghost does. Do you want the Holy Ghost? Do you want the Holy Ghost to go through you? To live through you. The Holy Ghost was also a guidance. A guidance. The Bible says Jesus sent the Holy Ghost. God sent the Holy Ghost to do what? To be our guide. And we need God's direction. And also in this extraordinary year, the, the fruits of the Spirit come along with that. Go to Galatians 5, 5, 522 real quickly. 522. The Bible says these are the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith, and temperance. These are some extraordinary things that God will grant unto those that will receive the Spirit of God. The Bible says he came also, as we back to Isaiah 6, 1, 6, 1, 1. The Bible says, he says, to, bring, uh, to bind up the brokenhearted. As I share with you, it can be an extraordinary year of binding together. I shared with him the other day. By how to, again, we share it Thursday night if you got a chance to see the broadcast. It was about a merciful ending. A merciful ending. A merciful ending. And in this year of 2023, I pray that there will be a merciful ending to the separation. 
Amen. The Bible says, I came to bind up the brokenhearted. God can fix some things that have been broken. Family relationships that are broken. Marriages that are broken. I said, every day I said, talking with someone, they said, I hadn't talked to them in years. Family members. Brothers and sisters. Flesh and blood. Right? And so we see, uh, again, he says, I can, I'm able to bind up the broken. Will you let God bind up and do something extraordinary? Say, preacher, this thing is unbindable. <laughs> is that even a word? <laughs> this thing is beyond uh, 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 repair. This thing is beyond anything. I cherish it just minutes ago. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? No. I got one. <laughs> Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Today, let's not go another year. Don't go another day, another month without letting God fix this thing, amen. To fix that which has been broken, to fix the pieces and put it back together, amen, and reunite. No doubt, whether it's relationships, family, friends, your relationship with God, whatever the case may be, Jesus said, I come to bind up the broken today. Perhaps the previous year your heart was broken, but God can fix it. God can fix it. Amen. Let downs, God can fix it this morning. Breakdown of health, God can fix it. I'm telling you today, he said, I come to buy. I'm talking about the extraordinary year. God can do extraordinary things beyond what super glue can do, beyond what gorilla glue can do. God can do it this morning. Amen. The power of God can fix it today if you would allow him to. Amen. God can fix it. He said also to set at liberty. In the same verse, to set at liberty. The captive and so today don't let the enemy captivate your heart and box you in today the Bible says to open up doors I believe in an extraordinary year where God's going to open up some extraordinary doors how many going to receive that this morning God open up some extraordinary doors some big doors some doors that have been locked shut some doors of impossibilities extraordinary year that God can do it. The Bible says I will open up doors. I can release, amen, something. I'm going to break some chains that held you back for year after year, some day after day. Today there's a release coming, amen. There's a release that God can do, extraordinary release, amen. Ball and chain locked up. I'm reminded of Paul and Silas of how they were thrown in jail. They were thrown in jail. The Bible says they were not to be let go. And the Bible says they were bound hand and feet but their mouth was not bound. Amen. The Bible says they begin to praise God Amen. in the midnight hour. In the midnight hour. Amen. In the midnight hour when it was dark and cold and lonely, the Bible says they praise God and God began to shake the earth. God began to shake. Did something extraordinary. It was beyond what the guard keepers could do. It was beyond what keys could do. God shook the place up. God did some supernatural things. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know God can do some supernatural things today. God can do some extraordinary things if we will open our mouths and praise him and glorify him and believe God in, the, in your midnight hour. Amen. God is able to break the yokes. God is able to break chains. God is able to break things that, again, the enemy has tried to bind us up with. Extraordinary belief. In verse 2, uh, uh, let's go to verse 2. The Bible says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Will you proclaim this today? Will you begin to say this is going to be an extraordinary year? Extraordinary year in Christ. The day of vengeance of our God to comfort the morn. Day of vengeance, God will repay as well. The enemy, you know, we sing a song sometimes. I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what the devil stole from me. Took back what the devil stole from me. Then we go on to sing a song a little bit more. He says, Now the devil's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. Satan is under my feet. David, the song comes from when time when David was off to battle, he was off fighting. And the Bible says the enemy came into the camp and took his wife, his children, his family, and all the military, all the soldiers, their wives were kidnapped and captured. Possessions taken, place burned down. The people, of the, the, his soldiers were mad at David. They were mad at David because, again, uh, perhaps if they had been there instead of out fighting, they could have saved the family. The Bible says, but David began to pray. He began to encourage himself in the Lord. I, I, I inform you, I encourage you 
to encourage yourself. Sometimes you got to ex do an extraordinary type of encouragement upon yeah. yourself. I mean, know that. Stirs up some times when nobody else is going to understand. Nobody else knows what you're going through. You're going to have to extraordinarily ex uh, 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 we'll do what? Encourage yourself. You're going to have to encourage yourself. There's a spirit that will be in the air, brothers and sisters, a spirit of depression, a spirit of pull down, a spirit of bondage that will try to encapsulate all of us, church. And we have to break out of that thing. I'm going to say that thing. You got to break out of that thing and say, you know what? I'm, I'm going to believe in God for extraordinary things, extraordinary praise, extraordinary breakthrough, brothers and sisters, today. Believe it. It can be extraordinary. You got to take your praise to an extraordinary level. Amen. Amen. David had to praise Amen. God. Yes, it does that. It says it does what? Well. It confuses the enemy. Amen. Yes. Amen. There was a time, another time, Israel was outnumbered. The enemy was all around. They were outnumbered like crazy. And the Bible says that how they, they was definitely going to be slaughtered. And the Bible says that he told him, he said, the king, he says, I want you to tell them to get the singers. <laughs> get the singers, get the choir. Get the instruments and start praising. Amen. Can you imagine that? What do you mean? I thought you were going to bring down some angels from heaven. No. I want you to start praising me. Amen. I want you to do an extraordinary praise. An extraordinary uh, faith. An extraordinary worship. And adore me. And the Bible says their voices begin to be lifted up in praise and worship. And the Bible says the sound went out throughout the valley and throughout the mountains. And the enemy got confused and said, hey, wait a minute. We outnumbered. Not us. Amen. And you know what? The heavenly host is able to do extraordinary things, church today. Through their praise and through their worship, through your dedication and commitment to God. I'm telling you, God's going to do some extraordinary things. And the enemy began to fight itself. And destroyed his own self. Extraordinary, exceeding. Amen. To proclaim, proclaim it today. I'm going to proclaim an extraordinary, I'm going a little long today. Proclaim an extraordinary year. Proclaim. He said, proclaim an acceptable year. You receive, are you receiving this this morning? Yeah. Receive it in your heart. Say, you know, this is going to be an extraordinary year. The Bible says in the vengeance of God and to comfort those that mourn. I don't know, again, what's going to take place this year. We don't know. Perhaps there will be some tragic news. But brothers and sisters today, whatever and what comes our way, my life is in his hands. Amen. Let me say that. Amen. My life is in his hands. Amen. With Jesus, I can take it. Yes. With him, I can stand. Amen. No matter what comes my way, my life is in his hands. Amen. I'm going to say that. Amen. And I don't care if you're mourning. When you're mourning, Sister, Sister uh, uh, Jones and the rest of the Jones family, the Denison family, God can take your mourning. Amen. And begin to turn it. Amen. Around. Listen to what it says in verse 3. To appoint those that mourn in Zion. Those that are of God's people. Those that are in the mountain of Zion. He said to give beauty for the ashes. Years ago we had a revival. Reverend. And we had a revival outdoors. And we called it. Again one of the messages was beauty on Ashford Street. I remember that. Beauty on Ashford Street. There's some beauty for the ashes. The enemy tried to destroy us. He tried to destroy each of us today. Somehow. Some way. But here in this service. This acceptance extraordinary year. There's some beauty uh, in the ashes. How many going to believe that with us today? There's some beauty on Astra Street today. There's some beauty that can raise up out of it all. God can do some great renovation. God can do some great rebuild. How many going to believe that? God can do some extraordinary things today. God can turn around our plight. He says a garment of uh, the oil of joy for mourning. There it is again. Uh, the oil of joy for that which is hurting. Uh, the oil of joy and the garment of praise uh, for the spirit of heaven. It's today. You put it on. Uh, praise God. Uh, shout to the Lord. A great triumph today. He says that thy might be called the trees of rise the plant of the Lord. Uh, the, the plant of the Lord that he might be glorified. Glorify the Lord. The scripture tells to magnify the Lord. To magnify the Lord. Why does he say that? You know what a magnifying glass does. Whereas mine. I'm supposed to be wearing them. That's why I miss half these words. I don't even want my, my magnifying glasses out in the car. My called glasses. Amen. Amen. And so we begin to see that magnify. What does it do? It makes those words bigger. The zoom. Amen. It zooms in on God. And brothers and sisters, they zoom in on God. Zoom in on his extraordinary power. Zoom in on his touch today. Zoom in and watch God do something awesome in our life today. He says today, magnify the Lord. Let God be extraordinary. 
How many going to say God is bigger than my battle? Amen. God is bigger than the battle. Amen. Amen. The Bible goes on and says, we move. I got to get you guys out of here. Number four, he says, the waste shall build, oh, the, the, they, they shall see, I told you my magnifying glasses. They shall build the old waste cities. They shall raise the former desolation. They shall repair the waste cities, the desolation of many generations. Things that have been, seem as if it's no more. Things that seem as if it's throwaway, has no use. God is able to do extraordinary things with I, the, that which is unuseful. Amen? We, I was a one man priest, Reverend Jones. He preached one, one man's trash is another man's treasure. God sees beauty in each of you. God sees extraordinary things through you and I. He wants to do exceeding great things through you. How many going to believe that? Amen. He says again, the devil says, are oh, you washed up? No, you're not. The devil says, I oh, give up. Nope, I'm not giving up. The devil says it won't work out. He says, this thing is destroyed. It's, there's no repair. No, it's alive to the devil. How many going to say that? God, we serve a God as a creator. Amen. And when God says, let there be, there is. And so back to our last text here in Ephesians 3.16. 3.16. So the acceptable year, Isaiah 61, and then 3.16 uh, uh, through 20 is Ephesians. And so in order for it to be an extraordinary year, he said, hey, God wants to grant you this. Did you know that? God wants to grant you an extraordinary year according to his riches in glory. We pray that prayer, the Lord's prayer. We say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Why does he say that? Because he wants the glory of God to come down upon you. He wants these blessings to come upon you to where you shall not want, to where you will have your needs supplied. To where when you have a need, again, it will come down from glory. And the Bible says he wants to grant it to you according to his riches and glory. We serve an extraordinary God that has everything we need. I mean, that. <clears throat> so as you go throughout this year, remember, we, have, we serve an extraordinary God. Your back's against the wall. God is extraordinary. He's able to either move, again, uh, again, lift you over the wall and get you through whatever you're going through. We serve an extraordinary God. The Bible says, according to his riches and glory, be strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man. This is back to the spirit, the anointing, the power of God, the Holy Ghost. In order for these things to be extraordinary, it's got to be done in the Holy Ghost. It's got to be done through God. I heard a man uh, last night. Uh, I was listening to uh, one of the services. Uh, Reverend Reverend Hall, uh, he he, he, he uh, they have a five hour service on New Year's Eve. Five hours. So what can you do in five hours? Well, a lot of times, a lot of times, some of the members get a chance to bring forth the word during that five hours, or have a song, or whatever case it may be. And one of his members, I just happened to click on. I just stayed in for a few minutes. But he says, not so much working for God, but God working with us. And through us. Amen. And so naturally, in other words, God going through us. And it's through the Holy Ghost. It's through the power of God. Amen. It's through him. Greater is he that is in you. Not greater is me. <laughs> greater is he. Let me say that. Not greater is me. I can't do nothing extraordinary. But with God's help. In 2023. With God's help. Through me, uh, through him, in me, in you, we shall see great things come to pass. The Bible says we finish. He says, in the spirit of the inner man, to be strengthened in the inner man. So let our relationship in the spirit of God move greater than any like never before. An extraordinary move of God. An extraordinary move to where it turns back the ugly in somebody's life. You can't keep it back from everybody, but in somebody's life, that ugly can turn into beauty. The back can turn to good because we serve an extraordinary God. His power is still greater than the enemy today. His grace is still greater today. His love is still mighty today. The power of God is still greater. Amen. The Bible says overcome evil with good. The Bible in verse 17, the inner man it has to be down on the inside of you. Greatness. That's why Jesus said, well, the kingdom of God is within what? Amen. You. Y'all ever read it before? No. <laughs> Let me come to this side. The Bible says the kingdom of God is within who? You. Amen. Let me try this side over here. The kingdom of God is within who? You. Amen. 
And so let's see. So he says the kingdom of God, he says, is in us. And so let the spirit of God move in us to do extra extraordinary things. I'm trying to get you folks. Come on up. Come on up. That'll help me stop. <laughs> Amen. But you think about this. When Jesus and his disciples, they walked there. If he showed them what to do, he showed them. And then they begin to, by faith, practice these same things. Miracles. Blessings came down. Things that were seeming impossible came to pass. And the Bible says uh, how there was one time that, that he tried to pray for a man and it did not come to pass. He prayed and it did not happen. He said, Lord, he tried to cast out a devil. That's what it was. He tried to cast out a devil and it didn't happen. The Bible says, uh, so he says, you know what? But you know what? Greater things you really do through fasting and through prayer. The part one brain to us about, he says, greater works can you do? Because he went back to his father. And so he was leaving it down with us. From heaven, he sent it down to us to be exceeding, extraordinary people, extraordinary church, extraordinary men and women to go do extraordinary things as we close. He says, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, being rooted and grounded in love, that you may be able to comprehend. In other words, you be able to understand it Make it apply to your life with all the saints. It's not just with some saints. What did he say? Oh, it's not just for brother so and so. Not just for sister so and so. He said for everybody in this room, everybody who hears this video, and beyond. He said for all saints to see the breath, the breath. In other words, how wide it is. He says that as we serve a mighty God as far as the east is from the west, as how far he stretches his love and his mercy and how mighty that he is. He said the depths of God, the lengths of God, the heights of God. There's nothing that's too great and too that can exceed uh, uh, the, what God can do. The Bible says knowing that the love of Christ, number 6, 19, the passes knowledge. The passes all knowledge. I don't see how it's going to work, preacher. You got to get that out of our minds. We're trying to hammer it home one more time. Extraordinary. Beyond what you see. I, I don't know if it's going to work. But believe it. Believe it. Back to her. Back to her. We was, we was at a conference. <laughs> it just came back to me. We was at the conference and me and my wife was in the airport. And she said, I'm going to apply for this job. I said, all right. They said, well, there's some restrictions, various things, whatever. I don't know if I'm going to get it. Well, actually, you know what? I said, just do it anyway. Do it anyway. Amen. Believe it anyway. Amen. The lady sent back a, a, a note saying, oh, well, we're sorry, blah, 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 blah. I said, no, no, we got to take it up higher. <laughs> so we wrote the boss, her boss. And she accepted it. Amen. I said, we're going to believe God and trust God, and God was able to exceed Amen. Again, the things in which God, he says, according to knowledge, according to what it says on the paper, these qualifications, I don't care. We're going to believe. According to how it looks, according to this, that, and the other, there's a God up in heaven who has a final say. There's a God in heaven that says, hey, the doctor says, well, ma'am, you only have such and such, this, that, and the other. There's a God in heaven who has a final say. He said, I wish the saints would comprehend this, how powerful and extraordinary our God is. Let's go into 2023 believing God for extraordinary things. How many going to do that? Outside of the ordinary. That's what extraordinary means. Outside of the ordinary. Yeah, yeah, I believe. No, outside of the ordinary. Right? To do supernatural things that science would be blown away with, where doctors are blown away with, where, where the bank is blown away with. Amen? Sister, hey man, she works at the bank. I'm sorry, but you know what? God is a God, his big bank is bigger, isn't it? God's bank is bigger. God's bank is greater to pour out from heaven, the windows of heaven, and pour out a blessing upon your life. If you need a miracle, God is able. He said it passes all knowledge of how it looks on paper, how it's going to be done. We don't care. He said, don't care about that. Just follow me. He says, he says that you might be filled with the fullness of God. Just let me fill you with extraordinary, my extraordinary power, my extraordinary moving, my extraordinary things that I have to instill in you, my extraordinary knowledge, the extraordinary word, the extraordinary Holy Ghost that I have. Let me put it in you. The Bible says you can experience the fullness of God. Amen. Number 20 as we close. Now unto him that is able. Amen. Unto him that is able. I'm going to, let's we stand to our feet this morning. Amen. Is he able this morning? Stand, if you believe he's able, stand to your feet.
God is able to do extraordinary things. Unto you, God is able. I send a congregation here this day, a congregation that believes is able. If you believe he's able, lift up your hands by faith. God, I believe in 23, you're able, God. You're able. Believe it by faith today. I'm telling you that God is able. Reach out and say, I'm, I'm receiving that thing right now. I'm receiving it in Jesus' name. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all, above all that you ask. Even your prayers that we're about to pray in a minute, God is going to exceed that. God is going to exceed even your prayers, your goals, your vision. He's able to exceed it. The goals for this church, the vision for this church, the things he has for each of you today, God can exceed it. Amen. The, 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 whatever it is in your life, I'm telling you, God is able to exceed it. He says, or even what we ask or think. You think it's going to go a certain way. But God's thinking even greater than that. The Bible says, according to the power. Right? So he puts it back on us. Yeah. That work is in us. It's back, the ball is in our court. That's what he said. He said, I'm God. He said, I'm God. I'm God. I can do anything. I, 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 all by himself, whether we believe it or not. He's God. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. He's almighty this morning. And today, according to the power that worketh in us, so how great, how great is our God? And so we sing that song. It's really a question. How great is he does? Is he great today? If you're not saved today, I'm telling you, he's great enough to save. Amen. He's mighty to save. He's mighty to forgive any sin. He's able to take the vilest of sinners and make them clean. He's able to wash the broken and, and, and the weary and lonely. He's able to clean up all sins today. I, I don't care how far you may feel like you may uh, be from God. I'm telling you, our God is able to exceed. He's able to reach beyond the break. He's able to reach beyond where you are. Work where you are today. I'm telling you, our God is mighty to save. If you need to be saved today, come to Christ today. Come to Christ. Come to Jesus in the year. This is acceptable year. This acceptable day. Today's your day to get saved. If you need the Holy Ghost, believe today. Believe today. Say, preach, I want the power of God. I want this exceeding greatness of your power. I want the power of your spirit to rest in me, to rest in my soul and my mind, to operate in your power, to operate by your spirit, to operate through the Holy Ghost today. Brothers and sisters, today, we got to be a Holy Ghost-filled church, Holy Ghost-filled people to do great, extraordinary things today. If you need healing today, God is able God is able to heal. Whatever's gone wrong, God can make it right. Whatever's plaguing you, today God can break the plague, the curse. Whatever's been broken, God can fix it. Today, an acceptable year, an extraordinary year. Let God work extraordinarily in your life. The altar prayers open today. They're already here. They're already coming. Come on down there and receive something extraordinary from God. His power is touched today, the touch of God. As he reaches down from heaven today, let it touch you right now. Let him touch you today. Reach out and touch him. Say, God, I need a touch from you right now. God, I need your power. God, I need you to move extraordinarily. I need you to strengthen me. I need you to guide me, God. Every day, every step of the way. Order my steps, God. Every step of the way, let me follow you. We're going to believe God for extraordinary things. An extraordinary year. Today it's up to us. Amen. Regardless of what comes our way, God will get you through it. The good, bad, and the ugly. We serve an extraordinary God. Amen. Let's all find a place to pray for a few minutes. Praise him. Thank him. Speak to him. Tell him what's on your heart. Tell him what you have need of. Listen to his voice. Whether well, again it's salvation, whether well, it's again a, a touch from God, whether well, it's strength, whether well, it's the Holy Ghost. Make your request known unto God. Make your request known unto God right now. He's able to exceed it, to exceed it above, it above all that you ask. Believe God. Don't just put him in a box. Pray for big things this, this year. Let's believe God for big things. Let's believe God for greater things, mighty things in God. Let's get closer to him. Let's be rooted and grounded in him and his love, growing and maturing in God, getting stronger in God being more and more like him. Letting the Holy Ghost reign and dwell in our midst to empower us and captive our minds to operate through him and not us.
God, it's not us. Let it not be us, but you. Your spirit, your power dwell in us. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord right now. As you begin to sing is unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's pray, church. Pray, pray, pray.
these services this morning. Give him glory. Believe in God. Believe him, believe him, believe him. Amen. And he's more than able. He do great and mighty work. Amen. Thanks the Lord. But God bless you as I pray. This time we're going to uh, receive an offering. Come on up, brother. This is standing. Amen. Uh, we're going to receive an offering unto the Lord. Let's give unto him and watch him richly bless you. text to give and we have various places that you can give. For those that are on audio, I want to give it to you as well. Say thank you for your giving through text to give. 347 229 We have through Zelle as well through our uh, Zelle. If you have Zelle on your bank account, bank apps you can give through the church email. That's how you contact it. And then through our website as well. We say thank you for your giving. Let's believe God. Amen. Continue to support the work of the Lord. Amen. Amen. This heat is working a little too well today, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. Amen. But thank God for this beautiful day. The Lord's Day. Amen. And it's been good to be in the Lord's house Amen. on the, the year of the Lord. Amen. And we believe in God for extraordinary, extraordinary Amen. year. Pray a little extra, extra on that thing. Believe a little extra on that thing. Believe God a little extra. Amen. Push a little extra. Amen. Come a little extra. Amen. Let me say it again. Come a little extra to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm quiet on that one. Amen. Give a little extra. Amen. Amen. Give it to the Lord and he will bless you. And all that you do. God bless us. We stand to our feet today. Dismiss. Amen. Amen. God is good to us. We're thankful. We're thankful. We're thankful. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your goodness. We thank you, God, for your love. Thank God for all that you've accomplished, allowing us to see this year. Allow us to come, God, and worship you and open up this year, God. An extraordinary year that we believe in you for. God, and regardless of what comes our way, God, we know that you're able to exceed. The challenges, you're able to exceed, God. The hills and the valleys is you always do. Help each one to go and operate in extraordinary faith, extraordinary belief. Through your Holy Spirit, God, and walk in it and live in it and dwell in it. God, let me pray, God, that you can do mighty works this year and beyond. Do a greater works. Answer prayers that have been prayed. Show yourself real, God, miracles. Through God, the things in which we know that you only are able to do. Pray, God, again, this year will be a mighty, mighty year of great things, great victories, great accomplishments be done in your name. God, we pray, God, and for the families here, those that are not with us today, God, we pray that you'll draw us back at the next point in time. And God, that we can all come together, God, and worship you, an extraordinary God. Lord, we pray that you bless. Go with each one. Order our steps. Order our path. Help us be tender to your voice, to hear your voice, to be guided by you and not us, to be guided by your divine will, that it be done. And God, we just give you thanks and glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. God bless our prayer. Happy New